Hello and what is up YouTube? It is IG3Iron here with the uh, patch notes that have just come through here for 325.0b. So there's some changes to Settlers, there's some updates. After a very, very successful opening weekend, at least from a launch standpoint, there have been some hot fixes to solve various issues relating to uh, progression and being locked out and even some crash instances. But this is going to be our first quality of life patch that we're going to get for Settlers. So let's take a look at what GGG is thinking and seeing about how the league is performing and how they're responding. So here we go. This patch contains a handful of improvements to the Settlers of Calgur, including the currency exchange alongside a number of bug fixes. Settlers of Calgur changes. First, the prepare shipment UI now displays how much of each given resource you have. Yes! <laughs> okay, so you you don't need to just click on prepare shipment and then exit back out, look at your whole town map and go, how much of that thing do I actually have? Okay, updated the shipping risk information to clarify that risk does not affect the chance for crew members to be lost or for your ship to be commandeered. Oh, that's... That's good clarification. Verizium monsters now have increased toughness instead of taking less damage, which results in less difficulty when paired with other mechanics that provide monsters with damage reduction, such as Affliction Wisps or Delirium Fog. Okay, so Verizium monsters should be easier to take on in a couple of different scenarios. Reduce the movement speed of bismuth tornadoes. Yay! How many of you have had problems with tornadoes? I've just simply run away from them for the most part, but a lot, I know for a lot of players, if you're playing, especially if you're playing a true melee build, you do not have that luxury or that option if there's a tornado sitting on top of you while you're doing a particular uh, mining operation. Reduce the damage dealt to minions by or a column storms. That's good news. I have on the currency exchange now displays how much of each currency you have in your inventory and loaded stash tabs. Good. I was having to go, I put Faustus right next to my stash tab and I was having to click and be like, okay, how much of this do I actually have? How much of this do I want? What's the ratio I want to trade at? That was, that was getting crazy there for a little bit. The place order on the currency exchange is now disabled until you have locked in both values, either by manually entering them or simply by clicking in and out of each box to fix them in place. That's good news. There were some horror stories over opening weekend of people trading at horrible ratios because of the way how the currency exchange was essentially locking you into a ratio and the people were just walking away thinking that was good uh, when their ratio had actually been overridden or replaced. The popular tab is no longer selected by default. Yay! Good, because most of the time I'm not trading popular currency. Popular currency being flipped is going to be flipped by like people who are just flipping. A lot of us have got a lot of assorted things that we want to get rid of or that we want to purchase. And that's why we wanted an auction house to begin with, because there's a lot of different currencies and a lot of different tradable things in Path of Exile. And we want to be able to access them and we want to be able to turn them into other things that we can actually use. So that was actually pretty annoying. So I'm glad that that's updated and changed. You can now control plus left click on currency in your inventory while the currency exchange is open to select it as the I have type. You can also have the I have box with currency on your cursor to set that type. Oh, that's kind of nifty. Although I can already, I can already foretell people just holding on to their currency and then accidentally deleting it, like moving it in a spot that they shouldn't. So, you know, you've been warned, at least those of you who are uh, smart enough or crazy enough to follow the bald bearded guy. Beware, you got currency on your, on your clicker, don't accidentally delete it. Gold within pickup range is now automatically picked up when you teleport away through means such as flick or strike. Hey, Beckett! Beckett, flick or strike now. You, you, you just don't have to move. Beckett and I were leveling together throughout the campaign over the opening weekend. And we were a little bit concerned about Flicker Strike and how that was going to work out. Beckett still made it work. Uh, whenever there was gold that dropped, he simply moved and stopped flickering for just a moment. But the whole point of Flicker Strike is that you never want to have to stop moving. And so that's great. That's a wonderful change. All right, some other changes that are coming. 
or already have come through this restart list patch. The Divination Scarab of Plenty now grants up to three packs of magic monsters in area have 800% increased chance to drop Divination cards. And the Scarab has been re-enabled. Okay, so the whole glitching Scarab thing, that has been fixed, at least for the Scarab of Plenty. Items will display the old benefits until you patch your client, though the new benefit will not be displayed in the map area modifiers list until a future patch. Okay, so they've got future plans for additional benefits. Restore the behavior where bonus completion for a map would be granted when you completed a Kyrak mission for that map at a lower tier than is naturally occurring. Nice. Reduce the damage of most Wildwood Ritual monsters, most notably the chaos damage they deal. Nice, that's because early league, almost nobody's got chaos resist. Using a bestiary orb to add a beast to your bestiary now also unlocks any relevant beast crafting recipes. That just almost sounds like a bug, so I'm glad that they fixed it. All right, there have been a number of bug fixes. Fixed a bug where you could establish mapping in King's March prior to upgrading the recruitment rank that allows you to do so. Fixed a bug where you could get stuck with impetrified amber if you were inside the tree when the encounter ended. Yikes. Fixed a bug where chance for used retaliation skills to remain usable and not consume a cooldown use was not functioning correctly. Okay, be aware, all you retaliation users. Just I'm sure they're still good skills, but just be aware. If, if, if for some reason you were just popping off and retaliation skills were going off all the time, that was not an intended function. Fixed a bug where Abyss Delve encounters could not be completed. Fixed a bug where you could not re-enter the crux of nothingness after dying in the area. Fixed a bug where black Morrigan beasts captured after 3.25 were not usable in beast crafting recipes. Fixed a bug uh, where, a light, where using a life flask would remove the warden's lingering tincture effect if you had the colloidal... Uh, col colloidal? How do you even say that? Colloidal. Colloidal? Mixture, passive skill, anyway, allocated. You guys tell me down below in the comments how you pronounce that. Fixed a bug where jewels with modifiers to maximum elemental resistances could not have the harvest crafting option applied to them. That changes a modifier which grants an elemental resistance into a similar tier modifier that grants a different elemental resistance. Fix a bug where Gravitious Betrayal Reward that swaps a divination card with a new random one was not working. Ooh, yikes. Fixed a bug, which could result in empty completed maps at the map device in King's March. Oh, interesting. That's really interesting. So that was something that I've seen a couple of players complaining about where they just had empty completed maps. So hopefully that means the map device will be much more rewarding now. Or at least more consistent. Maybe not more rewarding, but consistent. Fixed a bug where you could not hold control plus left click on the console equivalent uh, to reapply socket and quality currencies. Fixed an issue where some players were unable to retrieve partial orders from the currency exchange. Oh, interesting. Fixed a bug where you could not navigate to waypoints in part one or part two on controller input mode if you immediately went to your hideout upon killing Katava in act 10. Fixed a client crash that would occur when socketing void stones on your atlas and controller input and fixed a client crash. The patch has been deployed without restarting the servers. You will need to restart your client to receive the client changes this patch. There we go. Well, it sounds like for the most part, Settlers of Kalgur has been a hit, even from GGG's own perspective. I mean, there's some quality of life changes here, like to the currency uh, exchange and to the way how things are going to operate in terms of UI. But for the most part, things are looking good. I think there's still some more improvements that maybe could be tweaked, maybe could be made. But for the most part, this is awesome. I think it would be cool to have just a little added visual to show your boat actually progressing across the map. But like those are like little tiny things. That's not gameplay stuff. That's visual display. Anyway, those are the patch notes that we've got. I think the opening weekend has been a wild success. It's been a wild success even if you're like me and you only dropped relatively little currency. For me, I've dropped uh, one div. That's what my currency counting ring has tracked. Dropped one div, made a whole bunch of trades, all sorts of little tiny trades, and uh, we're still progressing on my uh, Necromancer in Holy Relic of Conviction. I've even been using uh, some Frost Bears just to play around with them because they are available again, and so that's been fun to mess around with on Spectres. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments about the updates. If you see anything that's going on with Calgur that you would like to see updated in the future, let me know down below in the comments and we'll chat about it in a future discussion video as we talk about the Settlers of Calgur as an expansion unto itself and the mechanics. I'm really enjoying it. I hope you are too. Anyway, that's enough from me today. Thanks so much for watching and I hope the ongoing Settlers of Calgur League is the league, a mirror of Calandra.
drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.